Hello and welcome back and today I want to answer the very simple question which WD Black SSD should you buy? A number of you who have been following the world of SSDs or even people that are completely new to this subject that are finding themselves in a position where they've got to upgrade their OS drive or their gaming drive up to a PCIe Gen 4 SSD to get some of that sweet, sweet high bandwidth there are wondering when they go to WD's drives which come heavily recommended on different websites and sources and editorials online see the words WD Black and then you suddenly find out there's more than one of them. That's right, the WD Black series has existed for quite a long time. It was Western Digital's kind of gamer or professional focused label. Whether you were someone in content creation, post-production, esports professionals or more, the WD Black series was kind of their high performance stuff and it has existed for many years in hard drive and SSD form. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna focus just on these three drives. This is the WD Black SN50X. Um, this is the WD Black SN850 on its own, and this is the WD Black SN7700. Now, why am I focusing on these three? Although there are other SSDs in the market, well, because all the other SSDs that we talked about before that, such as the um, SN750, which is the PCIe Gen 3 generation, or the WD Black hard drive, they are kind of previous gen, or even the gen before that. These are current. These are basically the most high performance WD Black SSDs in the market right now. D -d -d Despite that, as you can see though, at just a casual glance, they look really similar in terms of the retail packaging between them. And although they look incredibly similar, and dare I say it, they are priced really, really similar, in terms of architecture, performance, output, and what you are getting for your money, they are markedly different. And if you get it wrong on day one, you may never know that you effed up. So that's what today's video is about, understanding the highs, the lows, and which one of these is best suited to your needs. So we're gonna go through a bunch of different things about them. So first and foremost, price it's the biggest one isn't it most of us when we are looking at buying an upgrade particularly us consumers or home users we're thinking a little bit about the old cheddar there and we're wondering which one is the best value for money well unsurprisingly the sn7700 marketed largely as the kind of more cost efficient and value series ssd is by far the most affordable there now there's two ways to look at that you could look at the individual price of each capacity tier that we'll talk about later on but just utilizing the largest available capacity out there for this drive which is 2TB we can see that this drive has utilizing WD's own website a price point of around $134 per terabyte now to put that into a little bit of perspective this one in the middle the oldest drive of the three the SN850 arrives with a $146 per terabyte level there so again not a tremendous difference. A little over 10 to $12 per terabyte makes you think, why on earth would I bother with this with such a small increase per terabyte? Well, first and foremost, bear in mind that is an average based on the largest capacity. And if you go for a single terabyte, the prices do differ quite wildly. But two, the architecture of these drives is actually quite different and sustained utilization and performance will make a big difference in terms of efficiency and power consumption, something I'll touch on later on. But when we move to this end of the table with the newest drive of the three, the SN850X, it should be mentioned that that drive, the price point, because it's the newest and arrives with the largest capacity of the whole range, available in up to 4 TB, the price point and the cha-ching per terabyte, is actually a little bit more harsh, arriving at $174 per terabyte. That is a big old jump from that 134 at the end of the table there. So what exactly is this drive doing charging that much more? Other than the fact that it's the newest, why on earth, how on earth I should say, can it justify that price point? Well, in a few small but in ultimately I think meaningful ways. Across the three of these, there are different priorities when it comes to the capacity. So if you are someone that prioritizes small capacities, you're looking for an OS drive or a scratch disk for your editing, this drive here has probably got your back, arriving at 250 gig, 500 gig, 1 TB and 2 TB overall. Now, if you're someone that champions capacity, you want all the data you can, you're gonna go for this, the WD Black SM850X, because as mentioned, it knocks around in up to four terabytes. It arrives in one, two, and four terabytes of storage. Now, if you are someone looking for the middle ground, 
Unsurprisingly, you're going to go for the drive in the middle. This arrives at 500 gig, 1 TB and 2 TB, thereby leveraging the price point, of course, as mentioned earlier on, but also arriving in, I would argue, the more popular capacities, giving you a little bit of what each of these two drives is promising in terms of overall capacity and desirability to an end user, be it for gaming or an OS. But more above that, that price per terabyte isn't the only contributing factor to their hardware environment and how they achieve that price point. Now, all three of them take advantage of a SanDisk in-house design controller there, the WD Black G2. Now, at the moment, at the time of recording, the um, NAND and controller architecture of this latest generation drive has yet to be completely clarified, something we're doing there in the background and should have been updated in the um, article below linked over on NAS Compares with our full review. But right now, the thing these all have in common is they're all using an in-house controller. They're all using in-house NAND on board with the WD Black in the middle there running with 96 layer 3D TLC NAND and the SN7700 arriving 112 layer 3D TLC NAND. And I believe that the WD Black SN850 is either running the uh, 112, uh, the same 112 layer NAND, or maybe up to 164 layer NAND. We'll have to double check that, and again, check out the link in the description or the text bubbles on screen. But the, another big difference between these comes down to efficiency, because one of the reasons that this drive exists, the SN7700, is because it is DRAMless. Now, what that means is, when you look at an SSD, it's not unlike a computer insofar as it has a very familiar architecture. The controller is kind of the brain. In a computer, that would be the CPU. It also has the NAND. That's where your data actually lives. That would be kind of the hard drives of a computer on its own. But alongside that, SSDs have an area known as the memory there on board, the DRAM. And that is basically kind of like the spare hands, the juggling area of the SSD to work out its tables and basically do its job to help process that data. Now, that can increase the price point. It can also um, affect how well the drive uh, can work because the more memory you've got, the more scratch area you can deal with, but it also increases the power consumption and more. Now, the SN7700 is DRAM-less. It has no memory on board. It takes advantage of something called HMB, Host Memory Buffer. It utilizes a small area of the onboard client computer's own memory and storage to get the job done. So the drive is more affordable because it doesn't have to have the extra element of memory on board, but also it utilizes less power. It can run a little hotter, and more sustained operations will oversaturate the drive earlier than the other two drives, but there's still no denying that the reason that drive is a little bit more affordable is due to the absence of that memory on board. And for a number of users that are running it for an OS, a number of users that are using it for general editing, that's going to be great. Gamers, slightly less so. I would recommend if you're a gamer to certainly look at this end of the table, and if you're a PS5 gamer, certainly look at the middle of the table but we'll touch on that in just a moment because another big difference between these three drives is performance. Let's be realistic. If you were looking at an SSD in the first place, again, for your, whether it's for your OS, for your editing, your content creation, or your gaming, performance is a big, big, big contributing factor for you there. And across this table, you'll be unsurprised to hear that the more you go in that direction across the table, the higher the performance. Let's start with the lowest one. The SN7700 released in spring 2022 arrives with a maximum, if you utilize the highest performance on the 2TB model, uh, 5,150 maximum megabytes per second sequential read and 4,900 megabytes per second sequential write. Now, bear in mind, this is a PCIe Gen 4 SSD. PCIe Gen 4 times 4 M2s have a maximum 8,000 megabytes per second bandwidth. That's how wide the road is that they can saturate and fill. No drive can fully saturate that for a number of reasons due to the calculation between megabytes and gigabytes, but also just the sheer backwards and forwards of that bandwidth. But we can get really, really close. Now, the WD Black SN850 released in autumn 2020, nearly two years ago at the time of recording, this SSD has a reported 7,000 megabytes per second sequential read and 5,300 megabytes per second sequential write. So again, a huge increase over 
the DRAMless SN7700 in terms of the read operations, but in terms of write, not a tremendous increase there. Only around 400 megs, which is still good, you know. That's faster than an individual hard drive's worth of difference. But still, the write performance on this is a little lower. That's why a lot of users, WD themselves, and indeed Mark Cerny, champion this drive for PS5 utilization because the write performance is what PS5 kind of prioritizes. The uh, Sorry, the read performance is what PS5 prioritizes. The write, slightly less so. And a lot of that to do with the more closed nature of PS5 and how data is encrypted, unpacked, repacked, and compressed during operations inside the PS5 render a bottleneck where any high write performance options that an SSD could provide are fruitless because the system itself will bottleneck it there in the middle. So read operations is where it's at, and therefore that 7,000 megs on the SN850 uh, here on the WD Black in the middle is great for you PS5 players. But if we move to that end of the table with the latest SSD, this is where we're getting the best of all worlds. And this is why content creators, post-production, eSports users, and particularly PC gamers are going to opt for this drive overall. Because as reported, 7,300 megabytes per second, which is already an enormous leap off of this, although an arguable small leap over this. But it's the right operations that leap up substantially there. With the WD Black SN850X arriving with 6,600 megabytes per second as its reported sequential write operation. Sequential being large block data that's in a row, not random, but we'll touch on that in just a moment. Consequently, clearly it's the highest performing drive across the three of them. And although the um, read operation isn't a marketed jump from this one, the write operation is substantial. Substantial. And therefore, in terms of performance, unsurprisingly, this drive is just absolutely flooring both of these drives. Only so much so on this one, but definitely smashing this one straight out of the park. Now, continuing on the subject of performance, we can talk about IOPS, particularly 4K random IOPS. Now, what that means is random data that is scattered all over the disk. And a random 4K IOP measurement is about how many of the smallest operation can be conducted now uh, per second now the iops rating across all of these is actually pretty similar on these two it has to be said yes unsurprisingly the newest drive has the highest iops but the margins of improvement aren't substantial over that of the sn850 unsurprisingly the more affordable one once again due to its lack of onboard memory that dramless design means that its maximum number of random 4K tiny operations per second is noticeably lower, but still very, very high, rated in its largest capacity at 6, um, 6, 650,000 read IOPS and 800,000 write IOPS there. Very respectable numbers, and importantly, comparable to the majority of PCIe Gen 4 SSDs in the market right now that have memory on board. So despite its lack of onboard memory, it still challenges, at least in terms of random 4K IOPS, the majority of SSDs in the market right now. Now, when it comes to the SN850, we see a tremendous leap with read IOPS at 1 million. Write IOPS slightly lower at 7, uh, 720,000, but still, 1 million read IOPS is substantial in the extreme and certainly something to be proud of. And those running databases or larger, um, if you are a, an editor that has a huge archive of small clips and transitions and basic tables you have to go back and forth from of information are going to feel the benefits there. But when it comes to those uh, performance in IOPS, again, this drive smashes everything. And right now, I think is the highest rated 4K random IOPS drive in the market right now. Although it's read-write performance is by no means the highest in the world right now. In IOPS, I think it does win with 1.2 million reported read 4K random IOPS and 1.1 million 4K write random IOPS. So again, substantial numbers there. And this gives you some indication about why its price point is higher. It's not just about the capacity. It's about how it's managing to manage that much storage as fast as possible there. Which brings us ultimately down with all three of these drives with exactly the same durability, I might add. So if that was a concern, they're all rated at 0.3 drive writes per day or 
um, 300, 600, 1200, or 12, uh, 2400 terabytes written. So durability-wise, near enough identical. It comes down to who are these drives for? And that's going to be the most important bit here. Because if you're watching this, you want to know which one you should have bought. If you haven't already worked it out from everything I've said, from the performance benchmarks to their own individual strengths and weaknesses, let me make it nice and clear. If you are an esports professional, if you take your gaming seriously, if you are a content creator, if you stream regularly, and ultimately you are looking for a no-holds-barred drive experience for your storage that has practically no bottleneck, this is the drive for you. You're paying extra for that performance. How much is your time worth? Work it out. You'll realize that this drive is the one for you. If you are just a dedicated gamer, but more importantly, a PS5 gamer, this is the one that's going to be for you, particularly if you're someone that's looking for a deal because the WD SN850 is regularly on offer in different retailers as well as in and outside of Prime Day, Black Friday, Christmas sales and more. And I strongly recommend if you're a console gamer going for this drive. It did very well in the testing that we've done in the last 12 months here on the channel and I cannot recommend it enough. Also, it has official certification now from PlayStation themselves and of course Sony, so do check that out. But... If you are looking for straightforward video editing on its own and you're looking for a drive that can recall tables, recall databases and not have to worry about gaming and sustained operations and constant, this value series drive is the one for you. If you're looking for an OS drive, this is the drive for you. If value for money is what's important to you, this is the drive for you. This is the drive for people who are not looking to absolutely burn rubber. This is the drive for those of you that are looking for high-end performance, but you're not running a Xeon 12 core process. You're not running high-end DDR5 memory, and ultimately, your rig will not be able to hit these benchmarks. In those situations, this is the drive for you. But that has been understanding the difference and helping you decide which one of the new WD Black PCIe Gen 4 SSDs best suits your needs. If you've enjoyed this video, chuck like. It really helps me knowing what I'm doing right and wrong. And if you click like, I know I'm getting things right here on the channel. If you want to learn more about this subject as we compare this drive and all these drives against other SSDs in the market right now, click subscribe. We do a video every day and we cover all aspects of data storage. Use the free advice section if you need help choosing the right drive for you over on NAS Compares and use the buy links in the description if you want to go ahead and buy one of these and by using those links it costs you nothing extra and we on the channel get a little kickback from different retailers to help us make more videos. But apart from that, have yourself a lovely week and I'll see you next time.